they are currently renovating a s historic home here in Buchanan, right up the street on Front Street. It's a beautiful home here. <laughs> and they're going to show you guys some pictures, talk to you a little bit about themselves, their process, and maybe a little some time for questions. Absolutely. And I'll let them have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for allowing us to come and speak, and thank you for coming in on a beautiful evening here in town. Our um, curiosity has been horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Now's your chance. Right? Answer all of that. Um, I think we'll just tell just first a little bit about us. We have been married since <laughs> 2005. 2005. Yes. I usually call my mom. That's my anniversary again. Um, and we've been together for about 12, 13 years. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm a realtor, and Trent is an, an engineer. Engineer and manager. Yeah. Yes, at a company so. in Niles. Um, and we have gone through a number of homes um, before landing on this one. And as you can tell by this first picture with the garage, this is not a flip home, as many of ours have been. This is my husband's dream garage. So <laughs> we will be here for quite some time, so we hope to get to know all of the neighbors. Um, do you want to start and maybe go through some of our... Well, first history? off, sure. Start by saying, you know, we're not uh, speakers by any stretch of imagination. We're more doers, so we like to do this stuff. Um, Leah is kind of does the blog thing. She's more the internet and tech savvy person. I just hammer the nails and tear stuff down. So when it comes to the online stuff, Leah really handles all of that. Um, so this here tonight is just kind of a very informal thing so that we can meet some people around here, just like you said, with the curiosity. So um, we're not spectacular presenters, so give us a little slack here, but we'll try and kind of yes. work through this together. Please feel free to so, interrupt at any yeah. point in time yep, um, and ask any questions because we'll answer anything that we can. Yeah, so um, we we met, um, as Leah said, 13 years ago and we dated for quite a while and we got married and we initially moved into a house in Niles, which was the house that my father grew up in. My grandfather built the house in the early 50s and my dad grew up there, my uncle grew up there, my grandma still lived in it. When I was in my early 20s, um, my parents kind of wanted my grandma to move out into a condo where she didn't have to take care of the yard. And she didn't want to move because she really liked the home. She had a lot of memories there. And so I offered, I said, well, I'll buy the house and then that way it stays in the family. And, and so I did that. So I bought the house for my grandmother, moved into it, and it hadn't been updated you know, for many years. And so indoor outdoor carpet in the kitchen. Yes. yes. So indoor some outdoor people carpet like that. in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Lee and I met while I was living there, and um, when we got engaged, and decided that we would renovate the house before Leah moved in after we got married. And so that was kind of our first project was my grandparents' house, which then became our home. And so we mildly redid it. You know, it was just paint, redid the hardwood floors. It had oak hardwood floors throughout, so we sanded those. We hired it. We didn't do that. We weren't to the stage where we were doing some of the stuff that we're doing. Now. But we thought we were big time. Yep, we yeah, did. We really did. And so we built the indoor outdoor carpet in the in the kitchen. Horrifically painted. painted the cabinets. Yep. So Horrible. Quite at the time those colors were great. So, <laughs> they were. They were great. Um, so we did that, we got married, we lived there for a few years and then decided that we wanted to move to a newer home. Um, we enjoyed doing the renovation project, um, which was mild compared to what we're doing now. Uh, so we moved to Edwardsburg into a new construction home and uh, the basement was unfinished, so we decided that we would finish the basement. So that was kind of our first big undertaking. We put a bathroom in, family room, a couple of bedrooms. And one of the rooms were really special because um, I like to smoke cigars and play poker with the guys. And so I wanted a room where I could smoke cigars inside during the winter. And Leah, of course, didn't want to smell the smoke in the house, so that was a big thing. So I made this room with ventilation and sealed it up so that I could smoke cigars and, and, and play cards. And we got uh, bricks from the Studebaker factory in South Bend. They were demoing the factory Okay, there. we didn't just get them. No. You were at work all day. But Leah got them. So. And I went in with my husband's truck and a trailer, a huge trailer, went in. In the middle of winter. In the middle of January. There are these huge piles that look like they were 10 feet tall from the road. They were more like 40 feet tall. And I just walked, drove on up, walked up to this bobcat, and I said, are you selling these bricks? Knowing that those bricks sell for sometimes 5 to $10 a brick and that we were not, we needed 2500 
of them, and we were just, we didn't have that money at the time to spend on it. So I just went up, and the man said, "You can take whatever you can carry." Mm. And I took twenty five hundred, <laughs> and I handpicked every one of them out. And then when we got them home, we kind of that sort of started our thinking on the cool like. We loved knowing that those bricks came from Studebaker and that they were just going to be destroyed. And it was kind of, it was just a cool feature. Yeah. So then we carried them into the basement, cleaned them all off, and laid them brick by brick. And so that kind of got us into the, the older things. We really liked that repurposing the bricks. Um, not sure what happened to all the other bricks because 2,500 was not very many compared to the size of the Studebaker plant that we did down there on sample. So um, we did that while we were living in that home. Um, the the market kind of crashed, the bubble burst, and so a lot of homes were going into foreclosure. And a house came up for sale in Niles um, that was extremely affordable. It was $10,000. $10,000 was unheard of up until that point, you know. And that wasn't including my commission that I had no. lost about the realtor. Right. So we ended up, long story short, we bought the house and um, we ended up tearing everything out of it. It was in pretty rough shape. And so we took it down to the studs, took out all the plaster, floors. It was Kind of small house, it was about 800 square feet, 700, somewhere around there. So it wasn't very big, but it was two story. And we completely redid everything windows, siding, um, kitchen, bathroom, everything, and made it really nice. And we had planned on moving into it. Um, so we kind of did some nice finishes to kind of figure out how some things were working. And um, we finished the house about a year later, it took us a year. And so we put our house in Edwardsburg on the market at the same time we put house in Niles on the market and the Niles house sold in, sold in a couple of weeks. So we didn't, we ended up not moving into it. But we made a nice profit. We, made a nice we took profit. that money yeah. and we put it on the next house. Yep, which then went into the next house, which was another one in Niles, mm -hmm. which we kind of did the same thing, redoing hardwood floors, finishing the basement, tearing out the kitchen, putting in new cabinets. But we learned our biggest lesson on that one. Which was? Don't move into a house yes. while you were doing major construction. If you have to wear shower shoes, you need to live somewhere else. <laughs> That's what I've learned for myself. It's very difficult to work on the project, be in the dust of it, go to bed, and you wake up and you're still in the project. You and know? your clothes are covered in the yeah. dust and you smell like it all the time. Yeah, so just... after that project, um, that was probably a three month long project where we were actually living in the dirt and the dust and you know wearing shoes through the house just, just to go to the bathroom. You didn't want to walk down the hall because you might, you know, get a nail in your foot or something like that. So um, that was a good lesson that we learned. Um, so then after we were done with that house, um, we bought a house in Long Meadow subdivision. And it was a newer construction as well. We kind of did the same thing with the, with the basement, redid it. We really did the whole house. And yeah. We didn't intend to, but we did. Right. Yeah. And then after that was the Kaiser Mansion in South Bend. Um, I don't know if any of you followed that saga as that um, kind of unfolded, which is unfortunate because we really were looking forward to doing that home. Kind of the same thing that we're doing with this home that we wanted to make it our home. You know, we planned on staying long term. While we've enjoyed the process, I told Leah that I'm done working on, on homes. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> so. <Really? laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right, I know, that's the big joke, but, um, so, I, my real passion is working on cars, which is why the big garage it's here, um, because I enjoy restoring old pickup trucks, um, so, I've got a few that I've been sitting on for a few years and haven't gotten to work on, so, part of our deal with, with doing this house, after the Kaiser Mansion fell through, um, was that garage that I wanted. And part of the reason we went to the Kaiser Mansion is because it had a really nice garage. So it had a three-stall carriage house with a basement and everything, and that was right up my alley. Leah didn't care for the carriage house as much as I did, but... Um, <coughs> there's the centipedes that big. They're there. Um, so we will now get to the house that everybody wants to know about. Um, so I, tell how we oh, found this house. Oh, how we found this house, yes. Many of you probably know Krista and Adam Parrott. They live diagonal from this house in the White House that they are. They have been doing a lot of work to it. Um, she had been following our vlog on the castle, and I happened to be last June over at Michigan City by myself. Just took a day off and went and did some <coughs> old, you know, shopping therapy. And uh, she comes up to me and she says, are you that girl who owns that house in South Bend? I said, yes. And she said, my husband and I have an old house in Buchanan. We love this stuff. We start talking, exchange names, become Facebook friends. Fast forward six months to this whole debacle with the Kaiser thing, it's in the media, everything, and she sends me a message and said, I don't know what's going on, 
but if you are looking for another house, this one is going to be available on the market. And I said, oh, thanks, that's nice. Gave it no, like, it wasn't even on the market yet. We didn't know how the Kaiser situation was going to end. Um, that whole situation came to that we were paid back for everything and then paid additional money. And the day that that came through, Krista sent me a text and said, that house just went on the market. And so I came and I drove by and I called Trent and I said, you're going to need to take a little time off work. We need to go through this house right now. We wrote an offer and we bought it. Mm -hmm. Day off. Yep. So that's how we, it was just one of those. We walked in and it was about like 30 seconds in the house. Yeah, um, the yeah some of the things that we really liked about it um, were the windows. The windows are really tall. Um, it's an Italian Nate style home. Um, if any of you followed the blog, you saw the pictures that we posted of when it was a two-story home and there was a fire in, uh, in the 1920s. It was either 1922 or 1927. There's a date on one of the pictures, but um, we're not really sure. The Pierce family, who originally built the house in 1865, I think it was, um, their family has been in contact with us on it and has been following um, our blog. And they're extremely happy with you know, that kind of giving it a new life. Right. So, and we've tried to be very clear with them mm -hmm. that um, the home, and I'm um, starting through with the pictures of what it looked like when we purchased it, the day we purchased it. The home has been morphed throughout the years, obviously. That's just the way, the nature of a home. And the family, when they contacted us, they said, are you going to be okay that we're going to, we're going to modernize it and something. We're not, we want to keep the character there, but we have to have running water and heat and air and you know the good things in life and they said we just want it to be a home that's used for the next 150 years so they have been extremely supportive as you can tell the kitchen was lovely um, <laughs> it quickly came down um, the doors um, are some of our favorite features so we have thankfully saved every door every piece of trim and molding saved and labeled and all strung together Yours truly. Um, this room is still going to be the dining room. The kitchen will still be the kitchen. Um, however, this is a wall that here is hiding a bathroom that we have since made the new staircase. Um, we uncovered a door that was on oh, this we wall. We did. There were actually a couple of doors. There were a couple of doors on that wall that yeah. we didn't know about. Uh -huh. so. And uh, it's got 12 foot ceilings. It does. So pictures don't necessarily do it justice, but you know. The, doorways are tall and then of course the ceilings are enormous. Are enormous. Yes. Um, right here if you can see where there's some shelving or like some little built-in. Those actually when we took it all apart were originally pocket doors. Um, the pocket doors were there with the framing was there so it was really cool. So we left that framing. Originally come into the front part. Yeah. This is the main foyer, the formal foyer, which we will leave this formal foyer because I love the foyer. This is the front parlor which is the windows you see from the outside on the front. Um, I am a pianist, so that will be where my piano will go. Um, so I'm very, very excited, although it will also be where Christmas tree goes at Christmas time. So the hardwood that you see throughout here, this is not original to the house. Um, the way that you can tell that is that this is an oak floor, and the boards are really short. When homes were built a long time ago, they used really long boards because they had trees that were old growth, and they were just bigger. So some of the things that we're discovering in taking this house down is that the wood that they used is just was just mammoth. Some of the boards were this wide, especially like going up the staircase and everything. Every piece of wood that we pulled out of here is poplar. Um, the studs are poplar, the floor joists, the ceiling joists, um, the trim, everything. Everything's poplar. So poplar is kind of a quick growing tree. They grow in this area, you know, they're really prevalent, they're related to the cottonwood tree, and they're just really good for building. So um, that's been kind of unique as we've gone through. More of the front parlor. Mm -hmm. With the windows oh, yes. that we love. Lovely windows. Yep. Um, I'll love them more once all well, those shades are already gone, but <laughs> they won't be there. Um, we will leave it as an entrance off the foyer. Um, this is my attempt to try and show you the size of the trim, because the trim is just so, not only is it big and wide, it's thick, it's about two and a half, almost three inches thick. Yeah. <laughs> it's very thick. It's four pieces, so each piece of trim is made up of four different layers of trim that creates um, this is actually directly looking at the new staircase of that, and I've got these uh, arranged in chronological order, so if you'd like to see how that came about. This
this is the bathroom <laughs> that is now thankfully gone. And the new staircase is there. This is looking towards the kitchen, um, which you can now see a little bit more of. Um, of course, the windows are just lovely. These pictures, if you haven't seen them online, um, these are the pictures that the Pierce family sent, and this is as big and as clear as I can get them. Um, it was taken the day after the fire, um, which is just remarkable. Um, so this, this one is looking from Front Street, looking southwest. So the funeral yes. home sits right here next to it. So this is the front porch. The stairs come up off of Front Street this way. So all of this, the side porch is still there, the windows, but you know, the top portion of the house was removed. And the reason we think that this, the second floor wasn't rebuilt after the fire is probably um, financial reasons. I don't know when home in owner's insurance came in. I, you know, we were kind of doing some research to figure out when that was, but it probably, there probably wasn't homeowner's insurance in the 20s. Um, that was before the market crashed, so you know maybe things were tough on the Pierce family at the time. Yeah, right before. So who knows? Maybe they just didn't have the money to rebuild it. Now what happened is the construction is all brick. So today when you build a house, you frame it, you put sheathing on it, and then if you're doing brick, you build the brick outside of it and you tie it into the framing. Well, this house is brick framing, so it's all brick. All of the wood that's on the inside was just merely put there to hold the plaster. So the wood lasts, so it's kind of like furring strips. There's nothing low there. Right. So when the fire happened on the second floor, it burned off the roof. The roof collapsed, and because there was no framing to hold up the walls, it pushed the brick out, and the brick fell down to the side. Some of the other pictures that you'll see, there's not as much of it standing, and so picking up all of the brick and putting it back on would have been very costly. So they probably chose not to do it. Yeah, you, you know, it's hard to see through here, but you can see light through the windows. Pretty much the whole roof, the whole roof is gone. And a lot of the floor joists now um, are still burnt. You know, when we took the plaster off, we can see where some of them were, were repaired. There's a lot of charring, alligatoring, V patterns, if some of you are familiar with fires, how fires start. You can see where the fire started and kind of ease up from there, um, which is kind of cool to see because, you know, that's going on 100 years ago that the fire happened. So we can still see evidence. Of we that. will say that we've had a lot of people that ask, you know, why we why we take out the electric and put in new electric and plumbing and take out the plaster. And when we removed the first baseboard piece of trim, um, just to take it off to start saving, and we still weren't a hundred percent certain how and to what extent we were going to rehab the house, we pulled it out and all of the soot from a fire a hundred years ago came mm -hmm. pouring out. And what had been done is there's plaster, there's the wood lath, and then there's plaster. Many walls had a second layer of plaster and then drywall on top of that. So it was like taking apart three houses. Um, just we gained a lot of square footage by We did. <laughs> Sadly, we don't have that matches the square footage now. So thankfully, so we'll be reproducing. We'll be reproducing a lot. Yep. We have a we have an Amish friend on speed dial. <coughs> Not really on speed dial, but. Apologize, Benny Amish. <laughs> Upstairs, um, which you can tell the slope of the roof. Um, there are a couple of skylights in the upstairs, which we will actually be leaving. Um, if you want to take it back from here. Then. Yeah, so this room was kind of strange. So this was, a, you came up the back staircase. The back staircase remained. We were really hoping that when we took the plaster down, we'd see where the main staircase was because this house, being a grand home, obviously had a main staircase. But the way they rebuilt it, after the fire, it's very difficult to tell where the main staircase was. I believe it was kind of off of the foyer, because the window that's in the foyer is not original. We can see that now that we've torn it apart. That window was 